For our closing panel, I am pleased to introduce Rodney Robinson, a social studies teacher who works with students in juvenile detention at the Virgie Binford Education Center in Richmond, Virginia, where he has taught since 2015 in an effort to better understand the school to prison pipeline. Rodney is the 2019 National Teacher of the Year. In his social studies classes, Rodney takes a student center approach to civics education, empowering his students to push for social change. With them, Rodney has explored the historical roots of the US prison system, the ongoing effects of racial segregation and voting rights. Rodney's classroom is a collaborative partnership between himself and his students and is anchored in him providing a civic centered education that promotes social emotional growth. He uses the knowledge he has gained from his students to develop alternative programs to prevent students from entering into the school to prison pipeline. We are honored to have him with us today and to introduce our closing panel. Thank you, Rodney. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to join you for this important conference. Like many of you, I have dedicated my career to making the lives of my students better. And like you, I work with young people who have struggled to read their whole lives. And like you, I know it does not have to be this way. Throughout this conference, you have heard from presenters who have shared their research with you and explored strategies to support struggling readers becoming active citizens committed to improving their communities. As you heard in a gracious introduction, I teach social studies to students across grades 6 through 12 at Virgie Benford Education Center, a school located in the Richmond Juvenile Jail. When I started teaching there five years ago, our building looked more like a prison than a school. It had bare white walls, Today it has murals celebrating our students' heroes and motivational quotes from their students, from the students and their heroes. As a social studies teacher, I am challenging my students to improve their reading skills every day. For our students, it is essential to make lessons relevant to their lives. My unit that has had the greatest impact, the one that defines me as a teacher, is called Understanding the System, a history of prison in the Virginia juvenile justice system. This, these lessons engage my students more than any other. It allows them to step out of, outside of themselves, examine the system and the circumstances that led to their own incarceration. At the end, they better understand the system and how to avoid further and future incarceration. The major text is a graphic novel, Race to Incarcerate. I chose this book because it, its format is accessible to struggling readers. For every chapter, we have in-depth discussions of the materials as a way to build their engagement and comprehension. The students read and analyze excerpts from other books. They review online clips from movies, videos, and music. They analyze poems and hip-hop songs. Every day, they write in a journal with advice to their friends and neighbors about how to avoid incarceration. This unit defines me as a teacher, and it engages my students where they are. I wish, we all wish, that these students should have, would have the advanced reading skills to tackle relevant contemporary works such as stamps or such as how to be an anti-racist as part of this lesson. It would add context and expand their perspective to a different time and place. But this is not possible for the students of Virgin Benford Education Center or for thousands of students and children like them across America. We have to meet our readers where they are, engage them, teach them, and move them forward one step at a time. As they become better readers, they become better members of their community. I see that, every, see that happen every day in our school. By the time our students graduate, every student is registered to vote. If they have those rights, they have established partnerships with civic organizations to ensure their neighbors are politically active, and they actively work to increase funding for education for all students and to improve their schools. Recently, the students wrote letters to detention supervisors complaining about the poor nutrition of the food served to them. They asked for a meeting and the supervisors agreed to improve their meals. At the end of this process, it opened a line of communication to address other problems in the facility. This is why our work is so important. The ability to read is the foundation for so many things that can make our students' lives better. I am honored every day to teach students that reading is an essential skill and help them become better readers every day. And today, 
I am on, honored to introduce the distinguished panel of experts. Each of them has dedicated their lives to understanding how children learn and the obstacles many face to learning. They are going to teach us what we can do to address the problems facing struggling readers, whether we work with them in the classroom, a college lecture hall, district headquarters, or the state legislature. It is my, my pleasure to introduce Kathy Nile, a senior advisor at School Rise LLC. Dr. Nile's career has balanced research and practice with a clear vision of bringing students of all backgrounds to high levels of achievement. At School Rise, she and her colleague, Dr. Tiffany Raphael, have developed a comprehensive approach to help schools create a long-term trajectory of growth with positive results in school culture and climate, classroom practices and assessment, and student achievement and engagement. She was the first person to hold an endowed chair in education at the University of Hawaii, and she is a past president of the Literacy Research Association and the International Literacy Association. Christopher Edley Jr. is currently interim dean at the UC Berkeley Graduate School of Education. He was the dean of the UC Berkeley School of Law from 2004 to 2013, joining Berkeley from Harvard Law School. Throughout his career, he has moved between academia and public service. He served in the White House policy and budget positions under Presidents Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton. As a senior counsel to Clinton, he directed a government-wide review of affirmative action programs. He held senior positions in five presidential campaigns, including senior policy advisor for Barack Obama. More recently, Ed Lee co-chaired Congressionally Chartered National Commission on Educational Equity and Excellence. The commission's charge was to re revisit the 1983 report, A Nation at Risk. He chairs the commission's follow-on effort for, every, for each and every child. Ray Hart is the research director for the Council of Great City Schools. He has more than 20 years of experience in research and evaluation, and his work has spanned policy areas such as post-secondary success and college readiness, professional learning communities and school environment, teacher effectiveness, and value-added analysis, early childhood education, and adult and workforce literacy. He has also been the Assistant Professor of Research, Measurement, and Statistics at Georgia State University. Ray was recently named the Council's next Executive Director, succeeding retired Executive Director Michael Cassidy. Kara D. Lee is the Emeritus Professor of Northwestern University School of Education and Social Policy. Her research has bridged theory and practice developing the cultural modeling framework to help educators design learning environments that scaffold students' everyday knowledge to support language, literacy, and discipline-specific learning in schools. Her research integrates the learning sciences, human development, and ecological perspectives. She is a founder of the three African-centered schools that span a 48-year history. Most recently, she has been named the president of the National Academy of Education in the United States. Pedro Nogueira, has been the Emory Stoops and Joyce King Stoops, Dean of the University of Southern California, Rosier School of Education since July 2020. A former faculty member at Harvard, New York University, UCLA, he has been a champion of public education throughout his career and was a public school teacher in Providence, Rhode Island in Oakland, California. A sociologist, his research focuses on the ways in which schools are influenced by social and economic conditions as well as by the demographic trends in local, regional, and global contexts. He is the author, co-author, and editor of 15 books. His most recent book, A Search for Common Ground, Conversations About the Toughest Questions in K-12 Education. William T. Trent is a professor of educational policy, organization, and leadership at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign Center for Culturally Responsive Evaluation and Assessment. He is widely recognized for his commitment to the improvement of educational practice in American primary and secondary schools. His groundbreaking research on equity in education and his repeated service as an expert, Trent's scholarship on educational inequality has focused on school desegregation efforts at the K-12 and post-secondary levels, benefits and consequences, social organization of schools, status attainment research, co- and extracurricular activities, and comparative education. What a dynamic group. And now it is my pleasure to pass the microphone to Dr. Peggy Carr, the moderator, to begin an exciting discussion with these remarkable panelists. 
Take it away, Peggy.